time to recoup from that. Do you know who um, David Beckham is? Yeah. I'm just trying. Yeah. Michael Jordan? Michael B. Jordan or Michael Jordan? No, the fact he I was like, he should be the other way around. All right. No, no, no. <gasps> Michael Jordan is a basketball player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi there, welcome to Director's Debrief episode five, I think. Yeah? Five? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for confirming, Ram. Good to have you around. It's good to have him here. Yeah. Um, I think we need some time to recuperate. He has the footage so he can show the world, but we've just found out when we asked if Ram knows uh, Michael Jordan, he asked if we meant Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. And that hurt us physically. And There's just so much to take in from that. I know. Yeah. But... We move. Uh, all right. Let's, we move. Let's, let's rock and let's roll. Let's We're here to focus. Yeah. And we're here to debrief. Here to debrief. Um, which, by the way, we haven't had like mm. a, a non-video recorded debrief. And like, I feel like I don't talk to you if it's not in front of a camera. Because <laughs> it's even on like Zoom. Most most of our time together is via yeah. Zoom now. The, the, the strange thing I'm finding when we're talking to each other. Uh, oh. This looks unhealthy to the outside world, but it's what happens. We, we don't <laughs> I'm know so anything. so nervous. No, 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 don't worry. It's, we're just communicating via Slack. Like True. we're right, like we're on other sides of the room. Yeah. Could easily just shout, but it's like, hey, let's do this, let's do that. But there's reasons why. Right. Don't yeah. want to interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Uh, yeah, last week uh, we had Ollie with us, which mm-hmm. was awesome. Always love seeing Ollie. Um, and some questions uh, submitted. Yeah. I decided just for shits and gigs to put up on my Instagram is there anything anybody wants to talk about? Some people really came through. Um, old friends of ours um, and some people. Have yep. submitted some questions, which I'm very excited about. I've screenshotted them. I've sent Fantastic. them to Ram. Um, have you set your time, by the way? No. Right. All right. Do you want to look them up whilst I look for another apprentice? <laughs> um, so, yeah. Let's get the questions. Cool. Let's, let's, yeah. Let's, now that the timer has been set. Let's get the questions. Question number one. Biggest mistake you made. Biggest mistake. Who's that from? Sam G. Winsbury. That's Sam G. Winsbury. Oh. Thank you for the great question. Biggest That's mistake. Fantastic. All right. Uh, uh, why don't you take this on, Sam? Because Sam Sam. this is the reason why I don't want to take <laughs> this on. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest mistake I've made. Um, Please take this one. <laughs> I just thought you were going to do that whole interview style thing of turning a negative into a positive. Like, I can't. It's I used because, to do that. you know, my biggest mistake is being too confident yeah. for me. Um, genuinely makes me sick. That I used to say it all the time. Well, yeah. Do you know I had an answer rehearsed for that? Like all my job interviews, I used to go, uh, my biggest mistake is I'm too critical of myself. <laughs> um, and the, the one time I remember this was at Jessup's yeah, no, back wrong. when, uh, before they went bankrupt. Um, <laughs> Good job that didn't work out then. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Uh, but yeah, at Jessup's I said that. And I remember it just been like, she was just newly appointed because I got that job and mm. she told me, just newly appointed manager to which she goes, oh no, I love that. No, we really look for people who are really like, I was like, you didn't see that I Googled that answer yeah. 20 minutes ago on the bus here. <laughs> um, yeah, go on, um, biggest mistake. You know what, I can't, I can't say I've had I have mine, a on. biggest mistake. Oh, yeah. okay, in a second. But I've, I've made a lot of different ones mm. um, and continue to make them. So, I mean, something just off the top of my head, literally off the cuff is the fact that I used to think that I could do everything um, and okay. I, was, I was the best at a job so say for example I was doing and we talk about this different tasks within a business I'd be like alright I'm going to offload this to someone else yeah. 
but only because I really have to. But ideally, the perfect world is where I do everything because I'm, I'm the best. Yeah. And I don't mean that. I don't mean that in a like high ego way. But just you think because you're in control and you really care the most, you'll do the best job. Sure. And, and you think you have access to all of the right information to do the job. This is it. Best. Whereas someone else only know. Yeah, exactly. There's yeah. going to be, um, yeah, a difference in information. However. I soon realized that that held the business back and that was my biggest mistake because by not delegating and letting people specialize in certain areas mm. um, very much within the business, um, we, we essentially held ourselves back in the early days um, from growing quicker than we could have potentially. Yeah. I, d I don't know if uh, Sam meant this specifically at work though, because mm. mine isn't a work related. Go one. for it. Yeah. Um, it's choosing my course, my degree and my university and I will forever resent you for, I think it was episode three, where you really got into how the path I've taken has led me here and any other path would have probably led me elsewhere. And you're absolutely right, because I, I am, it's, I'll eternally be grateful for the people I met at university, um, not just for like professional connections or whatever, but for like, from a personal standpoint, mm. the people I met at university are some of my closest and dearest friends. Um, and so for that part of things, I'm very grateful for. But in hindsight, um, and I think if anybody's looking to study media, I, I would act, like actively avoid it, specifically at my university. I don't want to shit on them, but you can look up what university I went to on LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, it's I recently I've been doing a lot of thinking about what what I would have liked to have studied, mm. where the gaps in my knowledge are, and perhaps where university might have been a great place to fill those. Because it's not always that. Yeah. You know, there are YouTube videos, there are online academies that can fill those gaps. But if I was to think, where would I want to spend my three, where would I want to invest three years of my time to fill gaps of knowledge? There are better ways I could have done that. Um, and I think about times uh, or things like uh, computer science. Mm. I've always been fascinated by it and I still pursue that in my spare time. Yep. But to, to have the government pay for me for three years and, and give me a quite a controlled environment to do that in. Mm. Maybe university was a better place to do that than to spend three years studying media. So yeah, not a regret, just one of my mistakes. I yeah, say. sure. No, that's right. And I think when we when we think about our mistakes, um, like I'm, I'm thinking right now, I'm thinking of things such as like, I wish I traveled more. Um, as I see it as a mistake. I wish I spent my summers traveling far more than I did. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, outside of this country, you know, going, going wherever I could to explore. Yeah. Um, but then I also see that, okay, then I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do what I did in that moment, you know, where I decided to set this up or, oh, you know, go into this, yeah. um, you know, build relationships with different people in different ways. So, um, yeah, there's always going to be that thing of, you know, had I gone down the path that I wanted to, yeah, then I would have um, would have been, up yeah, there would have been trade-offs yeah, there for but, sure. No, it's an interesting one. Thanks, Sam Winsbury, for that one. Um, I actually think he submitted most of the questions. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> so this is a, uh, it's a, it's you know, a bit early to we should have just made up different Sam's. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, what's the next question? From an anonymous person. Yeah. Ram, you're looking woefully underprepared for this episode. Kind of those who fake it make it. Who asked that? Jamie. Jamie! Okay. <laughs> JP, how you doing? Um, faked, faked it till we make it. Okay, I'll tell you what, let me spin this in two different ways. Hmm. Let's talk about personally, on a personal level. Um, I like that. Faked it till you made it, and then let's talk about work. Because, yeah, I, I think it applies to both. Mm. I think it's a very interesting way to phrase that. I wouldn't phrase it like that when it comes to work, but on a personal level, are there any scenarios where you can think you faked it, faked it till you made it? It's an interesting one. It, it goes back to, I think, a conversation you and I had, right? Go on where I would go for coffee or a meetup with people. Um, and I would often, certainly in the early days, and this is business, but it's, it's personal because okay. I'm, um, I'm not meeting people business uh, or work. And I would have to often big myself up bigger than I would feel I was. Mm. Um, this happened for a little while. And it often happens for entrepreneurs out there, young entrepreneurs, um, or anyone really, who's just setting something up you feel like to the outside world, you have to show you're, you're doing some amazing stuff. Otherwise, they think that you're just either you can't be bothered to do anything else. Yeah. Or you, um, yeah, you couldn't have got into anything else, right? So, like, when I came into this, it was like, 
people are like, oh, he left uni, he graduated, maybe he couldn't get a job, maybe he couldn't get this. And I knew people were thinking that, or maybe perhaps I thought that they were thinking that, and I was like, okay, I have to big myself up and be like, yeah, things are smashing it, all of that. Yeah. I don't know why, just naturally came at the time, I'd be like, yeah, I, um, I also got offered a job in the city and stuff like that. So I would definitely almost big myself up, which is the kind of the fake it part. Sure. But you did get offered a job in the city. No? I did, but I wouldn't, I didn't, no, so I did, but I didn't need to say it to people. Of course. And right, someone right, actually right, called right. me out for that. Uh, a men, like mentor person when I uh, met them in London and he was like talking me through entrepreneurism and I mentioned that, oh yeah, I got a job in the city. Hmm. He's like, just, just forget about it. You know, don't hide behind that. You know, if people think better, more of you because you got offered a job in the city they're not the right people to speak to about this and yeah it was, it was quite straight to the point and it really got to me that oh yeah and I think it was around that time that I really had a change shift in mindset where I was like you know what it is, I am who I am yeah. uh, somewhere around there and it really shifted from that to I find myself now downplaying a little bit of what we do sure sure uh, in somewhere or another um did you ever hide your title, your job title as managing director? Did you yeah. ever like, shy away from it in case people thought you were over exaggerating your role? Yeah, of course. Like anyone, you know, if I if I say I'm a managing director and they seemingly think, okay, this guy's in his early twenties, hmm. it seems like I'm just a one man band, you know. Sure, um, sure. Oh yeah, oh that's cute. You're calling yourself <laughs> managing director just to say you're self employed or something. Yeah. Um, so I kind of help help certainly held that back mm. and I don't like you know if, if you do it and you're flexing it's just automatically an off-putting thing to some people when you don't even mean to flex yeah, or yeah. say something of, of that nature but how about yourself when it, it give it, let's go into personal personal yeah, life personal um I talked about this last week but pretty much all of my confidence for a very long time was fake because I, I always love to say this to um to my friends I once had to talk in front of a large group of people, actually the entire company. And um, so somebody said to me, oh, you look so confident up there. I was like, always look at my hands. And this is a, this is a little hack to know mm. if I'm nervous or not. Always look at my hands. Uh, it, I get sweaty hands and trembly hands when I'm nervous. Yeah. I always like to look at other people's hands when they give talks. There was a, an incredible and very sort of inspirational figure within this company who was also talking and everybody was like, look at her confidence, look at, and again, it was a, a woman in a very senior role in a very male dominated industry. So, mm. so a lot of people looked up to her. I know some people that I worked with were like, I aspire to be as confident and as, as her. And my main thing was like, you can be because she's very good at projecting the confidence, but look at her hands, her hands are trembling when she talks. And sure. Like it's, it, this isn't like the perf perfect person that you cannot be, you absolutely can be to that level mm. uh, and a lot of times where I worked in in sales and sort of beyond that when I talk with conviction and confidence it all started from a fake place because I, I thought I could get away with it yeah and it turns out you can uh, it's really hard to tell the difference between somebody who is genuinely confident and somebody who is faking it but the truth is behind the scenes as you're faking all of this confidence and you realize nobody's challenging you, right? you become more and more of a confident person naturally. So faking it till you making it till you make it in terms of confidence is just a great way to do it. Uh, so yeah. amazing outlook on things that, yeah, seeing how it helps you get up, you know, climb that ladder in the confidence. Yeah, levels. I didn't even think it was a thing, but I watched it on a conversation with Ali Abdal on YouTube where he talks about like, he, that's how he did it. I was mm. like, oh, it's, actually, it's a thing. And I think some people have written about it. But anybody who doesn't feel confident, so just stop saying that you're not confident. Pretend to be for a week. If anyone calls you out on it, you know, come tell me I was wrong. Yeah. But chances are you'll find that nobody really will because they'll they'll look at you how you've looked at other confident people. Like, wow, you're really confident. Yeah. Where do you think it comes from? Where do you think confidence comes from? I really don't know. Or let's I'm... let's spin that. Where does the lack of confidence come from? Uh, oh, uh, overcorrections. Over, I know where areas where I lack confidence have come from overcorrections or overreactions to certain things. Okay. Somebody critiqued something of mine, and so mm. I've tried to shelter that from everybody else because I don't want to be critiqued in that way before. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I always think back to like, I don't know, maybe like, like family gatherings, everyone's dancing, having a good time. Somebody made a comment about my dancing. Uh. Like, I'm never dancing at any other thing. And it took me years to just go, oh no, that's because I started like you're ribbing with your friends. Like they didn't mean it. Yeah. 
And once I realized that, I was like, oh, it's just it's just something that came out. It's yeah. not it didn't mean anything. Yeah. And so I'm gonna, you know, dance the night away. I love that. And the fact is when someone makes a comment or critique like that and you are lacking confidence, you often think that every other person in that room is thinking exactly the same sure, thing yeah. and they're all laughing at you when really no one really cares. Yeah. <laughs> you know? The fact is you're having a great time and even if someone is thinking and says that your dancing is not great, mm. which I, I, I've seen your dancing. I, I'm pretty impressed with it. Thanks, um, they're also thinking, wow, he's confident. He doesn't care. Yeah. He does not care one bit. And that's that's the magic of it. I love that. Yeah. I, I do find quite often as well is that the, what makes you think the person next to you is any different? You're worried about how you look to the rest of the room. What makes you think they're worried about how you look? They're worried about how they look. Yeah. Everybody's thinking the same <laughs> thing. I'm worried about how I look. Absolutely. They're too busy yeah. with themselves to, to think about the next person. I love that. On that part, though, I think confidence is a lot like motivation and things where it's not just a one time I fixed up my confidence and I've gone. Or even like a, a gradual thing, like you say. Yeah. It's a continuous thing because... Where you are in your life, you're like leveling up each time, right? So say you finally had the confidence to speak in front of a room full of people and, uh, you know, give a, give a speech there. But the next time as you grow, you may be delivering it in front of a larger audience or yeah. in front of more intimidating, larger clients um, at a party or gathering that you've never even met the people there or anything there. So when you're thinking about that, you've now got to level up your confidence as well. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, yeah, I've done this before. I'm confident I can do it. And you have to also work on your insecurities because maybe someone has made a few comments in between that's kind of knocked you down a bit or things. So what kind of fundamentals would you go back to if you felt that you were lacking some confidence in anything? Like what, what are the core things you, you'd remind yourself of? I think you described it absolutely beautifully in that you have to level up. If you don't, you, you don't stay where you are, you level down. I always think of like social scenarios that I'm in hmm. where I feel like I've crushed it. Like I, I was at a party where people like talking to me and right. stuff like that. If you think, if I think about those moments and what led up to that, it's usually a lot of social interaction. Sure. And if you let that, it, it, you have to me, I always think of it like a skill, something if you don't do for a while, you'll get rusty, but it should be relatively easy enough to pick back up again. So your first talk in front of a hundred people. After, if you if you used to give keynote talks to thousands of people, yeah, uh, and then suddenly when you you take a year off because of a pandemic or whatever happens, mm. you take a year off. The next time you speak to a hundred people, it's going to be a bit intimidating. But I think getting back up to thousands of people will be a much simpler process. Yeah, uh, and bearing in mind bearing that in mind for me brings me a lot of peace in that it is just a skill, something that absolutely anybody has the right and is able to obtain. Mm. So that's what I like to remind myself. What about you? That's brilliant. I would, I would describe you as quite a confident character. Yeah. Um, what do you think? No, so I, I I would to a certain extent, um, but I often see that if I haven't had that exposure, just like you mentioned, or I haven't done a speech in a while, or I haven't even spoke, interacted with people, certainly COVID was a great example of this, mm -hmm. where you lose that social interaction. Um, I found myself a little bit rusty, you know, making conversation, even small talk or things like this. You know, you it's all, all requires confidence to a certain extent. Yeah. And I think that that as you said requires just practice throwing yourself out there and thriving on that energy to kind of recharge yourself almost yeah um that social energy and going there so yeah i think like you say don't my main thing that i'm i often critique myself on is like oh i used to be able to do this why can i not do it now yeah or why am i not as good as i used to be and in anything i just take my take a step back and i'm like okay i'll get back there i'll gradually work back there so i'm not gonna deliver a speech to 100 people like i've done before tomorrow yeah but I'll do something small, maybe at work or maybe maybe to my friends that, you know, a little mini speech that I used to do and then gradually build that energy back up to get to where I where I think I would like to be. Cool. Uh, okay, you and Ollie gave a keynote talk uh, yeah. last month? Or yeah. The, yeah, you and Ollie gave a keynote talk last month. Probably one of your first, because uh, I know you both have done quite a bit of public speaking before, um, but probably one of your first in quite a while. How did that feel going, going into it? You know what? Um, I was nervous before i went on sure. um because there were firstly these were uh, part of our client base um so we already work with them but i'd never actually met some of them because they were uh, european officers um so that was that was intimidating in the sense of thinking what was on the line yeah and who we were delivering it to i've also not delivered one in person with ollie in a very long time as well so how that would all flow and there was just a lot of things going on in my mind but when we got on stage ollie ollie i'm sure vouched exactly the same thing because this was one of his first in person and he does this all day every day normally yeah but in person there was just something there was energy in the air and it went from me just like feeling nervous or my palm sweating to just 
boom and like thriving on that it was fantastic there were you know we, we delivered it was it was a great experience and i think i came back and said i want more of that energy yeah, uh, yeah. going forward you know just communicating with people we had a lot of questions and answers afterwards and it threw me back to the old days when you know that was that was a real fun thing yeah. you also mentioned it almost charged your social battery because mm. then you found yourself afterwards the conversations that sort of followed you're yeah. quite happy with yeah definitely that's that's exactly goes back to my my point earlier that i certainly think straight after and I blame blame COVID. COVID's happened a long time ago. We've been communicating for a while, but I think because of work or other commitments, I've had the had less opportunity to do that. Yeah. I mean, we're doing Zoom calls all day, every day. You can switch that off. You know, you, there's less of that small talk in between. You know, you can try it, but you know, you don't need to. You know, you don't need to put as much effort in. Yeah. Whereas when you're meeting people in person, like I was having dinner with these people afterwards and all of that stuff, and you know you you had to push yourself out of that comfort zone a bit like like people are probably like la- laughing at this what i'm saying right now and be like come on it's just having dinner but yeah. you forget that you d- we don't do that as often anymore sure, and yeah, yeah. Uh, i really came back like yeah was this really nice experience um going forward awesome yeah um i don't really want to get too into the uh, professional aspect of it but i do want to sort of touch on this because it, it's a it's a huge core of sort of our philosophy when we speak to clients about faking it until you make it. Mm. And it comes from something Ollie said in a a podcast we used to work on a while back, which is, uh, yes is the answer, what is the question? And it's not necessarily, I don't like saying faking it until you're making it in this regard, because it's more about having the confidence that you can do something, that you can accomplish something. You haven't done it before, but you are willing to stop at nothing to make sure it gets done. If you can, if you have that confidence behind you, say you can do it. Yeah. Why not? Because if you're willing to put your body on the line, as we like to say quite often, yeah. to make sure it gets done, then it can get done. Yeah. Um, and that's that's it. Yeah. That's brilliant, and um, I think we've seen it. I think that confidence that you've just said there, that's come with confidence, right? Yeah. You've you've built that over time, um, and I think some clients that we've handled this year, um, some of our major ones, we've yeah. seen the proof in the pudding, sure. right? That it's not like you promise things that you can't do. Um, but you have that confidence when there are demands or requirements that are a little bit outside our normal comfort zone or normal sphere, but we know we can achieve uh, because we know the direction. So it's not completely just hitting hitting and hoping. Um, And I mean, we're coming to the end of 2021 right now. We have delivered on a lot of those requests, if not all. And uh, I mean, we've had some catch ups with some clients and it's that that sweet moment there when we're like, wow, we actually, you know, we delivered and we went above and beyond. Yeah. That's the feeling. And that's, I think that adds to that confidence overall. Yeah. Um, but sorry, just flipping that a little bit again, yeah. I love flipping things. Flip. Um, I do feel that at WP now we're downplaying ourselves a little bit. Yeah. Um, and we, we've now hit a really nice area. We've got a fantastic team of people of all um, kind of uh, talents in our, in our team. But to the outside world, I don't think we've leveled up. Sorry, man. Uh, Ram's staring at me as we said you said that. But yeah, carry on. All sorts of talents, right? <laughs> yeah, all sorts of talents. Um, but I, yeah, I feel that we, to the outside world, yeah. we haven't let them know exactly where we've come. Even yeah. in 12 months, 18 months, certainly straight after the pandemic, we were very active on um, LinkedIn and so on. And then we disappeared a little bit. Yeah. I hope people have realized, but or isn't like knowing that we've gone. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> certainly that guy in Russia listens yeah. to us. But um, I think it's time that we really show the world exactly how great our team is. It's not a one-man band. No. It's not a two-man band um, with a director's debrief. But behind the scenes, like the team, the effort that's going on. I want I want, I want, want to show more of that. Definitely. Yeah. We we talked about, we had like a one of our post 6 p.m., 5 p.m. Our late night talks. Yeah. Just about, I think it was following a client meeting who was having a bit of a, um, a shakeup. So we weren't going to be dealing with the same group of people uh, as we were. And they were just expressing such gratitude. They loved our creativity and, and all of that stuff. Mm. And we were like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think we, for a while, we've had to downplay it because we were sort of finding our feet but actually yeah 2021 maybe even towards the end of 2020 as well we've kind of managed to sort of solidify our offering know where our comfort and most importantly our direction because i said if yes is the answer what is the question Mm. we've also turned down some pretty high profile work yeah 
just because it didn't align with where we were heading. You know, mm. our mission is to bring healthcare into the digital age. This wasn't a healthcare brand, but also we do some non-healthcare stuff yeah. because it helps us gain our, uh, achieve our objectives in healthcare. Yeah. Uh, but this wasn't going to do either. And it broke my heart a little bit because, you know, back in the day, we would have been like scrapping for any odd bit of work. Mm-hmm. But now we have these clients that we have to do right by. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it would have been right by them to use capacity and resource on a project, uh, not even in their industry. Yeah, absolutely. And it is, it's always hard. You know, I, I, I completely feel you when, you, you know, how could we turn away work or maybe suggest something else to them instead? Yeah. But the fact is, unfortunately, that is focus. Yeah. And we're getting at a point where... It's not like we are niching ourselves, you know, too tight where we can't we can't do anything else. We are working with non healthcare brands and where things align in certain ways, values align with the brand and etc. But on the same token, we have to keep that focus in a yeah. certain respect. Otherwise, we will we we will stop giving the clients that we do currently serve and any new potential ones in this area the be- very best we can do because we're we're no longer specialised in that area. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Great question. What do you got? What's the next one? So this is why I was giving you funny looks, Ram, when Ash was talking about all the great talent we have. I'm woefully underprepared, yeah. But he's learning. <laughs> Do we see work as a coping mechanism? God, that's uh <sighs> Can you translate that for me? Yeah. In what you think? I think that question is a little... It's a great question. Perhaps unfinished. Hmm. Because uh, coping mechanism for what? If I was to think coping mechanism for life, I quite like my life. Mm. Um, And so I could, yeah, it's, do do you use work to escape from anything? I think ultimately is is the question. I, uh, again, I mentioned this mentor guy that I met met at the beginning of my my journey, uh, who had a meeting with um i have him on linkedin so potentially you'll listen to this uh, but i have a lot to thank for him it was only one meeting i've not really spoken to him much since then mainly because we he, he went away we did different things but it was a great couple of hours conversation over lunch um and it fed a lot of things that didn't quite make sense at the time but materialized and if one thing he mentioned i think i mentioned this on a previous podcast but i'll, I'll try and i'll say it again is that try and keep your life as a bit of a, a pie chart right Okay. and cut it into three segments and obviously there's a lot more towards life but let's just break it down to something simple and you've got your your family and your friends yeah. and everyone that you care about in one segment um so let's call that social yeah you've got your health so your health is your wealth so all of you like making sure you're looking after yourselves you're furthering your strength your abilities um but also you, you're looking after yourself in all ways um in that area and then finally, it's your work. So what we do on your day-to-day basis. But it could also be a side hustle for those that are doing their side hustles uh, and so on. So all that all comes into that one segment. Yeah. And it's like, often we think that that exact pie should be cut into equal segments. Yeah. But things do overlap, you know, uh, or things do spread out. So maybe work one week is a little bit more and you lose that that focus on your family maybe you don't call your parents as much or skip you know yeah skip a gym session exactly and so on or maybe you you work out a lot one week because <laughs> you're you're looking ready you're ready for the weekend but you work kind of uh, you put some projects on on the side and things like that and it's that's okay yeah but if you can just keep in your mind that you're just trying to maintain those three segments to a certain degree don't feel guilty when you've done one a bit two more than the other but just try and try harder next week maybe call your mum and dad a bit more or you know speak to your sibling that you haven't spoken to in a little while you know try and do a bit more you're conscious consciously active and um trying to work on that yeah that could lead to a lot more of a happier life and his reason find reasoning behind that is say something say all, all your life say that whole pie is your work and you use it as a coping mechanism just try and tie it back to the question yeah what happens when something bad happens at work what else do you have to fall back on right. and it's not like your health or your family is your coping mechanism but you've got a, you've got that there right you can be like okay i lost that deal but at least i'm well fit happy and i've got my lovely family and friends around me and it's the same the other way that okay say you're all in on your social life what happens if you know something um someone passes away that's really thinking to the extreme or someone moves away that you really cared about or you have a bad breakup or something like that 
you know, the other things are there. At least you can say, okay, well, I've got my work to focus on, my coping mechanism, or I've got my health to, yeah, you know, I'm still healthy and so on. So I think to answer that question, I wouldn't say work is my coping mechanism, but I make sure that where it's the coping mechanism when I need it. It's a backup. Um, com- yeah, compared to everything else, yeah. I think early on in my career here, I found work very rewarding where I saw the output of my input. And so I think to begin with, it was a coping mechanism for me because I didn't really, I didn't think I should focus attention on the other things. And I think a lot of people at that, what was I, 20, I was young, 23, 24. <laughs> I was a young man when I came to Ash. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I didn't think at that age I should be working on my social life. I don't think I should be working on, and first off, I, I just want to say, you. I don't think you have explained it like that before. And I think it's a really, really smart way to look at things. Because also, you're right, not everybody's pie is cut in the same way. I remember seeing, uh, well, I remember a friend of mine, I was speaking to him. He's such an intelligent person. I was like, I wonder if you're holding yourself back because you're, like, I was, I was like, I, maybe you could be so further along in your career. And when they told me, actually, they love the other aspects of their life. Right. I was like, fair fucking play. Yeah. Like, that's me trying to put my, like, my slices divided on, on, onto you. Sure. And I actually took inspiration from that person and I started to allocate more time to, to my social life, yeah. to, um, to family and stuff. And yeah, I think, yeah, in the beginning, it was a big coping mechanism. But lately, I think I've started to enjoy those other aspects. They've also inspired my work to be better. And likewise, like the more energetic I am about work, I can take that energy to social gatherings and talk about, you know, it always comes up. What yeah. do you do for a living? What do you, all, yeah. uh, you know, all of these things and talking about them with such enthusiasm, I do feel like it's it's nice. Yeah. Um, I, I hope uh, I've noticed, you know, when I talk about work with enthusiasm, other people will talk about their work with enthusiasm. Absolutely. And I think, I, I don't get me wrong, my pie does change a lot. Of course. You know, uh, yeah. as it does yours. <laughs> we know from when we talk. Um, and the, t- the times that I really realize that my pie has changed too much, certainly work is becoming everything or encompassing. Certainly when we've got clients deals going on and things like that, it's natural, is when someone asks me about work outside of my, my normal circle. Yeah. And I prefer to see the conversation away from it. Interesting. And it's not because I don't like my work. You absolutely, you know, I would... It's, you know, it's everything, obviously. But, well, it's not everything, but... Um, <laughs> It's, um, that just highlights something to me that I'm almost like, I want to clear my head away from it and just, you know, focus on something else. And that just highlights to me that, okay, you know, I should just change something up here. Maybe go to the gym a bit more or maybe meet some of your friends that you haven't caught up in a long time with. So there's trigger points or um, little indicators of, of that. Yeah. I don't like any of my answers for that, but I think Ash gave some gold. So when you're making the reels, could you use his content? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. I cut out some of the ums and ahs and then we're good. Sure. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let's take the, I think there was one more question. Yeah. Should we take it quick fire or it depends how deep it is really. Oh shit. We why? Have... <laughs> why the deepest? <laughs> we should have started with that one. Um, um, let's tease out, but maybe we can di- chew our, dig yeah. our teeth in a bit deeper into the next episode. Biggest misconception for you? Um, that you'll get success within a certain time window. Oh, yeah, I was um, going to say that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone be like, yeah, that's obvious. You've got to wait for the success. Yeah. But a lot of people really do forget that, you know, it could happen in a year, <laughs> you know, or it could happen in a long period of time. But there's just, don't don't set that time expectation of when, when goals going. But there's, there's a lot to really unpick on that, maybe. Yeah, we'll do that next yeah. episode. I would have two. One, that it's a get-rich-quick, mm. like, kind of a assist. It really isn't. Mm. <laughs> like, any business you're going to set up, even the titans of the industry took years to become profitable. Mm. Uh, two, that you get to choose your own hours. Yeah. You don't. You go from an eight-hour day to a 24-hour day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also, yeah, it's... That's, we're just talking about the cons here because they're misconceptions. Yeah. Also that, I don't think it gets talked about if, if you truly care about it, how fulfilling it actually can be. Mm. Uh, to sort of just end this on a bit of a positive note. I, absolutely. I think the misconceptions part, yeah, we, 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 um, we spin that into actually the misconceptions about it not being right for people. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what people, you know, like you say, people don't expect it to be fulfilling, but... 
No. Yeah, uh, actually, let's end this on a super positive note. What's your um, What's your most what? Hmm, how do I phrase this? What's your favorite part about being an entrepreneur? Um. We'll answer that next time. Okay. Uh, I really don't want to cop out on that, but that was a, yeah. No, I'm glad you kind of said that because I was going to use some, I, I was just going to copy an answer that your dad yeah. told me. Oh, really? Go, yeah. go, go for it. Um, it was that time um, we, we all went for dinner yeah. a while back, actually. He said that the fact that you get to make and learn from your own mistakes, which he's right, like. If you, if you think back to any sort of corporate job, or if I at least think back to any sort of corporate job that I've had, you are avoiding all mistakes that other people have made before you, mm. which isn't necessarily as rewarding as looking at, you know, all the processes, all the systems, all the way things that are happening now yeah. because of the pain, the the issues, the errors, yeah. the closed door meetings that you had leading up to that moment to where you just get to sort of stand upstairs and overlook and just see things running smoothly. That's incredibly Because of that journey. Yeah. Well, that's, you, yeah. you, you phrased it like that and I, couldn't, I haven't stopped thinking about it's that. It's a great, a great point. And just spinning on, I, yeah, I'll tell him, oh yeah, that's a really good, <laughs> good answer. But something on that part as well is the fact that whilst you don't get to make the mistakes and then learn from them, it's also, I find in entrepreneurism, like you're in charge, yeah. so, obviously. Um, so you get to make those decisions going forward and you're not worried necessarily about making the wrong call yeah and it goes back to your line of like no decision is often worse than um, the yeah. wrong decision yeah. and it's the same thing there and i see it in corporate corporations that um you know we've partnered or worked with where certain people sometimes may be worried about making the wrong call or something like that and certainly it's easier said than done but within wp like i really want to keep that culture out for as long as we can yeah it's like yeah don't worry you can one last thing because we all got to go home, especially Ram. He's stayed behind. Thank you, Ram. You're, I know I've, I've made some harsh comments, but thank you very much for this. Um, the one thing that I once saw or heard on a podcast, sorry, is that wrong decisions are the most information-rich data streams you could possibly have. Mm. Uh, because you get a correct decision, you get no data out of it. You get a little bit of success, sure. But if you make a mistake, you get so much data that you can inform and use to inform your next series of decisions on. I love that as a little soundbite. Yeah. Mistakes are the most information rich data streams there possibly are. Fantastic. What a great note to end it on. And yeah. I, I mean, I'll do one last thing. Uh, if you've not seen the cartoon on our Spotify or our podcast accounts uh, of Sam and I, please check it out. Let me know what you think about. Us, whether you think it's accurate to who we are should we upload um, the first version <laughs> i think i think we should at some point i think it'll be it'll make a nice linkedin post yeah, at some yeah, point sure. to be like uh, before and after yeah, or, don't worry yeah. about your first draft keep on yeah <laughs> <laughs> because um whoever that cartoonist was definitely had something in for me but yeah, i'm not sure why. it must must have been in like someone love else. me you got me so right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it did indeed but cool. um, do you want cool. to sign this episode off yes thank you guys for listening if you did enjoy it please share uh, make sure you subscribe on whatever channel you're doing we're just we're still getting started and um, we've had a great um response so far but Feel free to also let us know what what you want to hear next and uh, in the comments or wherever you're listening to this from. But thanks. Make sure you do because Ram stayed behind an extra hour after his like he finished. So please do this for Ram for anyone, you know. For Ram, he's all right.